Jesus, be the center, be my source, be my light, Jesus. Jesus, be the center, be my hope, be my song. Be the fire in my heart, be the wind in my sails, be the reason that I live, Jesus, 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 be my vision. Be my path, be my guide, Jesus. Jesus, be the center, be my source, be my light, Jesus. Jesus, be the center. Be my hope, be my song, Jesus. Be the fire in my heart, be the wind in these sails, be the reason that I live, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Be my vision, be my path, be my guide, Jesus. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me for our midweek devotion here today. Uh, I was singing through the the siren as they tested our uh, emergency system here in downtown Charleston. You may have heard that noise in the background. But let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and your many blessings. We give you thanks for this holy season of Lent in which we have been journeying to uh, that wonderful celebration of Easter. And Lord, as now we have gotten closer, we know this weekend brings with us the celebration of the palms and then the journey of Holy Week. We pray that you be with us today as we share around your word in these days, as we celebrate uh, even though we are distant from one another. And so, Lord, we ask that you be with us today, as only you can, in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. I thought I would do a few uh, songs for us today. Of course, that first one was one called Jesus Be the Center. It's one of my favorite of the contemporary songs. Uh, but this is an old one, and so you all may know this one. And uh, Join with me in singing it wherever you are. If I can remember how to do it on the guitar here. It's one of those songs that I usually do with the organ or the piano. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's redeeming love. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. 
Oh, how grace, how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be Let thy goodness like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it Prone to leave the God I love Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Let's do that first verse again. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of God's redeeming love I love the new tunes. I like the old tunes. Any of those songs that sing of God's love and God's grace and our seeking to follow in the pathways of Christ always make my heart sing and make my soul feel comforted. And I hope it does the same for you as you join me today. As I mentioned, we're nearing the end of this holy season of Lent, and uh, beginning next week, we'll be in the midst of Holy Week. It's hard to believe uh, that we're already at that point in our journey uh, this year. And it's also kind of hard to believe that it's been a year in these long days of COVID. Uh, but we know that that light is at the end of the tunnel, and we pray that as we continue to practice appropriate practices of social distancing and getting our vaccinations and all of those things that we're doing, that soon uh, that burden will be lifted from us. Uh, as we move towards uh, Holy Week, one of the texts that occur in the uh, lectionary uh, for this year, but I did not focus on, because if you've been joining us for worship, you know uh, we've been uh, following a, a series on the Ten Commandments, which we wrapped up this past Sunday. But there's one of the texts that occurs during this third, this second year, I guess it is, or first year, year number one, I guess, year A, <coughs> or year B, uh, year B with the Gospel of Mark. Uh, you know, Mark's a very short gospel, and so a lot of times during the lectionary year of Mark, they insert readings from the Gospel of John. Uh, and one of those readings that occurs during this year uh, comes to us from John 12. I've always liked it. It's, it's been one of my favorite texts as we hear it. And so I wanted to share it with you today and, and reflect upon it a little bit. Uh, it's a story of, uh, again, it's in chapter 12. It's in, as he's moving into that last week, and he's in the middle of it, actually. But we read here, it says, Some Greeks were among those who had come up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and made a request. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus replied, The time has come for the human one to be glorified. I assure you that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it can only be a single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives will lose them, and those who hate their lives in this world will keep them forever. For whoever serves me must follow me. Wherever I am, there my servant will be also. My Father will honor whoever serves me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, I pray that our words and our reflections this day would be acceptable in your sight. You ever and always are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I've always liked this text. Uh, you know, it reminds me of uh, how we all are, are seeking to, to find Jesus. I'm also mindful of those times when I've preached in a variety of pulpits. And, and one that comes to mind was in Buffalo. I may have shared this with you before, but the Buffalo Church was built in 1870. It's an old church built right after the Civil War. 
And when I first went down there uh, to begin serving, the, the previous pastor brought me up behind the pulpit, and he lifted up this uh, part of the pulpit there. It's kind of a, a velvet uh, cover there, so I guess your documents won't slide off and things. But he lifted up, and underneath it, it was signed by someone, a previous pastor that had served there. It was dated back uh, in the 1800s, uh, and it was kind of neat to see that. I'm also mindful that in so many of the uh, pulpits around our seminaries, Many of them have plaques on them, but the plaques generally aren't to honor whoever gave the money for the, uh, the pulpit or who has donated the money for the fancy chapel at the seminary, but rather they're often engraved, uh, in, with, engraved with simple words that say, Sir, we would see Jesus. Or in today's world, Sir or Madame, uh, we would see Jesus. Reminding the clergy that, that stand behind that pulpit that it's not about us that's about the people wanting to see Jesus. And these Greeks, as we read in our text today, wanted to see Jesus. Right before that, we read of Jesus coming into town, uh, you know, the Palm Sunday Parade, which we'll celebrate on Sunday. And they've probably seen him there, and now they, they wanted to, to know him. They wanted to see him. They wanted to, to be with Jesus. And is that not why we come? When we come to church, when we come to devotional time, we want to see Jesus. You know, they were intrigued by this man that had come into town, and now they wanted to see them. And indeed, as I read the text, I, I can sense they were excited about wanting to see Jesus. I was reminded of a time when, again, down in Buffalo, I'm remembering some of my experiences down in that town. There's a young boy there, a young man really now, uh, Zeke. And Zeke was a really good guitar player. He plays could play circles around me he was a great guitar player uh but anyway and one of his idols was bb king and so we decided we would go see bb king he came and played at the municipal auditorium believe it or not uh several years back and so we went to see bb king play and he rocked the house and we had a great time but that zeke wanted to meet him he wanted to see him and so that night after the concert we went out in the parking lot there uh along the street and waited because the bus was back there and sure enough bb king came out and Zeke's face beamed with such joy and excitement of seeing this wonderful old guitar player. Uh, it was exciting, got to shake his hand, and it, it was just a, a moving moment. Now again, I'm not equating Jesus with B.B. King. We know the Lord is much bigger than any uh, guitar player. However, I think the excitement that Zeke felt is the same excitement and desire that these Greeks were having. They wanted to see Jesus. They wanted to be in Jesus' presence. But it's kind of interesting, though, that when this message is finally relayed to them, Jesus responds in such a, a cryptic way. He begins talking about seeds being buried and dying and rising. It's just like, it's not, oh, great, I'm glad these guys want to see me. Let me bring them in. Let me talk to them. He begins talking about his glorification. And as we all know, that means his crucifixion. He begins talking about those things of pain, those things of difficulty. Kind of an interesting response. But one of the things that reminds me of when I've read this text, I've studied it for a while, is the sense that, you know, if we really want to see Jesus, we have to go to the places he shows up. And where Jesus most shows up in our lives is in the midst of our brokenness. He shows up in the midst of our pain. He shows up in those difficult places. Again, for many of us, perhaps you and me, the first time I really experienced Christ was when I admitted my brokenness, my failings, my failures. That time when I turned in repentance to him. And then Christ came in the midst of that brokenness, bringing healing and hope and strength and forgiveness. And so I think as Jesus was responding to these Greeks, he reminded them that it wasn't about the big parade and the party about where he'd be found. That rather Jesus most often shows up in the, in the more difficult places. Indeed, even the broken places. And I began thinking that, you know, this year has been so hard on us. This time of Alex's isolation, these painful days of not being able to get together, and we long to see Jesus. But the thing is, as Jesus reminds these Greeks, that's exactly where he is. 
that Jesus is in the midst of the brokenness. Jesus is there with those who continue to suffer with this illness. Jesus is there and in the midst of all the difficulties that we see around our world and our planet. And most especially our Lord's with his people who are mourning in Colorado and Atlanta where evil has reared its ugly head. If we want to see Jesus, we know he's in those places because that's what he's told us. And as we prepare to go through this season of Holy Week, I know I'm, I'm longing for the opening of the tomb of Easter and the light and the opening of our doors and coming out from under COVID. But also know that in that journey, a journey of remembering the pain, journey remembering the difficulties, Jesus is there because Jesus always shows up in the broken parts. And so if you're struggling today, I, I want you to know that that's where you can see Jesus, right where you are with whatever you're facing, that you just invite him to be present or maybe more especially invite him to open your eyes so that you can see him because he's there. And those of us that want to see Jesus where we are, and maybe things are clicking along okay. Maybe the place to go see him is visiting or connecting with someone who's suffering. Because Jesus shows up in the midst of the suffering. Indeed, that's what he came to do, was to go to those places of pain and struggle and bring new life and new hope. So my prayer is that we would all seek to see Jesus. And when we see him in the midst of those difficult times, that our faces would light up like Zeke's and like I imagine these Greeks did when they saw the one and came to see the one for whom they were looking. So let us seek Jesus by going to the places where Jesus can be found. Thanks be to God. Amen. Uh, as a closing song, uh, it talks about opening our eyes to see Jesus. This one's called Open Our Eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus to reach out and touch him. And say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. Open our eyes. We want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. As I mentioned, our, our Holy Week is upon us. I invite you to join us for some of our services this coming week to see Jesus as we gather as community. I know it's hard in these days of COVID and we continue to, to wrestle with being saved. But I know on Sunday, our Palm Sunday service, we do have some seating, social distance for around 100 folks if you want to come and participate in person. But of course, we will be online for that service. But then as we journey through Holy Week, on Thursday evening, we will have an outdoor service where we can gather and share in communion. I know it's been a long year of not being in communion uh, in that manner. We've celebrated it a couple times, but... Uh, we invite you to probably come next Thursday night 
uh, to a Holy Thursday, Holy Communion service where we will separate in our parking lot. You can tailgate, bring lawn chairs, sit behind your cars. We'll have some seating uh, between here and the old Garlo building if you just want to bring your chair and sit outside. We're praying for good weather, of course. We invite you to come and be able to join in a time of communion with one another again. Good Friday, that long journey to the cross. We'll have a special service of uh, Stations of the Cross where you can come and walk the stations here uh, in the Centrum, uh, but also we'll have that available virtually as well on Good Friday afternoon. Easter Sunday, when we gather to celebrate the power of resurrection, we invite you to come. We're going to try to offer several different opportunities. One, an early service at 8 o'clock that will be uh, uh, in person. Uh, in the Centrum, it will be a short service probably early morning. And then 9.30, though, we're, we're wanting to have a big celebration outside. I know it's been so hard to gather, but we know we can gather outside if we wear masks and keep social distance and be very safe. And so weather permitting, that Sunday, Easter Sunday morning, we'll gather out behind me here on Morris Street and just celebrate the power of resurrection together. And then, of course, at 11 o'clock, we'll have our online service uh, where you can uh, zo you know, zoom in to see us through Facebook, uh, but also we'll have some limited seating of about 100 people or so in the centrum. So we're hoping to have multiple opportunities for us to see and encounter Jesus during Holy Week and Easter. But let us always remember that he's most found where there's pain. And so if you're having pain today, know that he's there with you and he'll support you, sustain you, and bring new life as only we can. He can. In Jesus' name, amen.